So the first thing you do is you name the sequence. So what type of image is it and what cut? Is it a sagittal, axial, coronal? Is it an MRI or is it a CT? Is it contrast or non-contrast? Okay, so that's what you have to describe here. Um, then you can move on to identify the lesion. Almost always you're gonna have a lesion. Um, and when you're identifying the lesion, the first thing to do is identify its location and its characteristics. So right frontal, is it large, is it small? Um, estimate the size. You, a, after a certain point, you're gonna be able to just look at something and be like, oh, that looks about like two to three centimeters, okay? Um, is it hyperdense or hypodense if you're talking about a CT scan? Or is it hyper intense, iso intense? That's another term. If it looks similar to brain, but slightly abnormal, you can say iso intense or iso dense. Is it enhancing, non-enhancing? Um, and for MRIs, you know, you want to talk about how it appears on various sequences. So it's a T1 um, post-contrast enhancing lesion that uh, shows signs of diffusion restriction that's already leading you to think, okay, maybe this could be a GBM. Um, then you can move on to identify what surrounding effects and changes to the normal brain architecture you're seeing. Is there vasogenic or cytotoxic edema? Is there sulcal effacement, midline shift? Is there signs of herniation, signs of hemorrhage? You know, you could have hemorrhagic tumors. Um, you could ha have a tumor that's causing uh, compression uh, of the you know, third ventricle or, or um, of the cerebral aqueduct causing hydrocephalus. So you want to identify that if you see another pathology on the imaging that is likely related, you want to identify that. And then finally, you put that all together and you, and you give what you think the most likely diagnosis is and what you think the differential diagnosis is.